Hello my Oru cadets and welcome back for another training mission at Stealthy Wood HQ. Today's assignment, complete a sales order for a customer who wants a dining table designed and manufactured to their exact specification. Why? Because here at Stealthy Wood, we have a wide selection of products available in our regular inventory. This includes standard products as well as those with variants, enabling customers to choose from a range of customization options. However, sometimes a customer wants us to design and manufacture an item that we don't normally sell. This process is referred to as Engineer to Order, or ETO for my acronym lovers. And it allows us to work with a customer to create a custom product that would be otherwise unavailable to them. So, enough chit chat, cadets. Let's jump in now to see how that platform supports this workflow. So before getting started on the Engineer to Order workflow, we need to make sure that Odoo is properly configured. The first thing to do is confirm that the Replenish on Order, or MTO, route is unarchived. The MTO route is used to automatically create a manufacturing or purchase order for a product only after a sales order for it is confirmed. This is useful for products that are engineered to order since they are only manufactured when a customer orders them. The MTO route is archived by default as I said. To unarchive it, we're actually going to go over here into inventory and configuration and settings. Now you want to scroll down over here to reach warehouse and you see that checkbox next to multi-step routes. Well, you guessed it at this point. You want to make sure that that is enabled and that you hit save up here at the top. All right. Now that you do that, a routes option will appear on the top configuration menu. So you want to go up to configuration and routes. Once the select it, it basically shows you all of them. Now, as you can tell, I've already unarchived the MTO route. So let's unarchive a different route as an example instead. To do so, we're going to click on filters up here, archived. And there we have it. We have this uh, cross dock one. Now, once that you select it over here, you can actually click on this action button and boom, you guessed it, unarchive. And just like that, if I remove the archive filter, there it is right there. And then now appears on the routes page, meaning it can be used for our workflows. All right, so up next, let's head over to the project app because I want to show you something. Okay, so here you can see that I've already created an engineer to order project. This will help us keep track of the stages for each ETO order. If I click on the actual project, You'll see that I've also created four stages over here. We have waiting, design, review, and finished. Now, let's head out of here because I want to show you more stuff. I'm just doing that today. We're going to go into sales over here. Okay, and you want to look at the products. Perfect. So inside of here, I want to make sure that our products are set up correctly. So first, we have the ETO service product over here. Now, this represents the process of having our employees design and engineer the product based on the customer specifications. Here you can see that I've actually set the product type over here to service. Why? And the units of measure also to hours. Why? Well, this is basically set that way since the customer will be billed per hour of work that our employees do. This service will cost $100 per hour. And that's how that's calculated. And then finally, I've also set the create on order field that we have right there to task inside of the project engineer to order just so that everything works properly. Now this will ensure that a new task is created in the project every time we confirm a sales order for the ETO service. All right, now let's go out of here and go back via the breadcrumbs, which today is ETO bread, and select the actual product over here. Now this is a generic product that we've created that can be added to the initial sales order and then reconfigured after the design process. On the general information tab, you'll notice immediately that the product type over here is set to storable. Why? Well, since this will be a physical product that we're going to manufacture, the sales price is left as $1 just because we don't know yet how much the final product will cost. This will be updated later on the sales order itself. Next, if I click on inventory over here, I want to direct your attention over here. You want to make sure that the MTO and manufacture routes are both enabled. The MTO route must always be selected alongside another route or else Odoo won't know how to replenish the product. This configuration tells Odoo to create a manufacturing order for the product every time a sales order is placed for it. Finally, if I click on the Bill of Materials Smart button up here at the top, here we see all of the product bombs. And if we select this bottom one called template over here, we can actually see something that I've already configured. This bomb is just a template with the components and the operations tabs both empty over here. Now, why did I do that? Well, that's because during the manufacturing process, I can duplicate this template and configure it as needed. This is useful because it means that I don't have to create a new bomb for each ETO product. I just need to configure a new variation of the template. And you do that by selecting action and duplicates. So right now, the other thing that you can also tell for this is that in the reference field up at the top, I've entered template. 
This will allow us to easily distinguish between the blank bomb and the ones that we configure for each custom product that we produce. And boom, we're all set to sell the ETO service to a customer. So let's move on. So now that we're all set to sell the ETO service to a customer and then design and manufacture the exact product that they're looking for, we can actually start the whole process by actually staying here on the sales app and selecting new on the quotations. So let's assume that our customer over here is Wood Corner. And we need to now start adding our product. So we have an ETO product as well as an ETO service over here. Now for the service, we do bill it at a minimum of 10 hours over here. And it's kind of important because additional hours are added later depending on how long the process actually takes. So for now, we're going to leave it at the 10 hours. Now for the ETO product, I'm going to enter what they wanted. And they told us they want a dining table. Very fancy. And I'm going to leave the unit price right now at 1 because we won't know the final price until the design is complete. We still want to add it to the sales order though, so that an MO can actually be automatically created once the sales order is confirmed. Speaking of that, let's go confirm this over here. And we're ready. Now once that we did that, a few new smart buttons appeared at the top of the page. Here we can actually see that the sales order is now linked to one project, as well as one task over here. How to find it real quick. Now if I click on the task smart button, it's going to take us over here to the service one. I could see that a new task has been created with the sales order number attached to it as a follow-up. The task also displays the project it is a part of, which happens to be, in our case, the engineer to order one that we had. And that's perfect. So heading back to the sales order using the breadcrumbs, which are sales order breadcrumbs, the manufacturing smart button that we have up here at the top, it basically tells me that a manufacturing order has been created for the dining table. I'm not going to worry about that right now, though, since the MO is just a template that we must configure after the components and operations for manufacturing the product have actually been confirmed. And lastly, we have the Create Invoice button up here at the top. This way, a customer is billed for an ETO product, and that will actually vary based on the invoicing policies of each company. Now, for the purposes of this demo, we'll bill the customer for everything at the very end of the workflow, so don't worry about that button for now. With all of that out of the way, we can actually finally start to work on the ETO service itself. So I'm going to go out of here and head over to the project app. Click on engineer to order, and you can already see that one task right there. And this is the one that's titled with our sales order. Perfect. Okay, so for this project, we'll need the help of two employees. Donald Johnson, who is the designer who will design the dining table, and Robert Smith, the engineer who will review the design plans. So I'm going to select both of them inside of this assignees field. So we have... Donald Johnson, as I said, and Robert Smith. Now they're assigned. And now we're finally ready. So now, once that we're here, we can actually go over to the design stage so that we can get things started. Now, our designer Donald works with the customer to design the dining table. It takes him 12 hours, which he logs in the timesheets tab over here. You can do so by hitting add a line, select Donald Johnson, and at this point we're going to put 12 right there. Designing? Just because we could have that, <laughs> just for the description right there. And finally, with the design finished, he moves the task to the review stage over here. And we're going to go through this. Now our engineer, Robert, reviews the design that Donald created and determines how much the finished dining table will cost. In this case, he says it's going to be $1,000, which we're going to enter into the sales order later. So keep that in mind right there. Now, review takes an additional four hours, which he also logs inside of the timesheets once again. And this time, we are Robert. So for this time, we're going to put a description of just review, because he reviewed that. And he said, four hours. Oh, something new has happened. All right, now that we're done here, we're actually going to move it over to the finish stage. Now, I want you to make a quick note of something. Now, notice that the remaining hours on the sales order field over here is negative six. This is because we've exceeded the allocated hours specified at the top of the time sheets tab that we have up here at 10 which was set to 10 automatically based on the number of hours on the sales order. This is helpful as it allows us to see how many additional hours we need to build a customer for. So before moving on, let's return to the sales order using the sales order smart button up at the top. Very convenient, actually. And we want to make sure that all the pricing information for the ETO service and ETO product is correct. We're going to have to do some updates. So for the service over here, if you notice, our delivered column has automatically updated to reflect the total number of hours logged by our employees. We're going to enter that same number over here for the quantity just so that we can match these up. Boom. Perfect. And now the total price of the service updates automatically. Now for the product, 
We're actually going to change this right now since our unit price is different. Remember, it happens to be a thousand dollars, as I said earlier. It's a very nice, very nice dining table. All right, now that we know the design of the table and therefore the components and operations required to create it, we can properly configure that template bomb for the ETO product. So it's time we head over to manufacturing outdoers. So here, the first thing I need to make sure is that the template bomb is selected in the bill of materials field over here. And now that it is, we're going to select that internal link over here. All right. If I wanted to configure this template, I would want to actually first duplicate it because I don't want to mess up the template. All right, great. Now this ensures that the template remains blank and can be used for other custom products in the future. On this duplicate one, we're going to get rid of this reference and we're going to put our actual sales order that we had over here, which was 19. And now we can get started by adding our components, which happens to be a table top. And then we also have six table legs. So you want to do this rather quickly. It's a pretty big table actually. And then for screws, how many screws do we want to say it takes? Well, let's just say that each one, each leg has two. All right, there we have 12. All right, finally, I'm going to add the operations, which happens to be one, which is going to be cutting. So we're going to type in cut, going to give it a work center, and we're going to do a new one. And then the next one is going to be, I don't know, we have to assemble that table too, Odoers. So we're going to assemble, and that one is going to be at the assembly station. And we're going to close that out. Great. Now, after confirming that the new bomb is saved, we're going to return back over here to our sales order, or actually, sorry, our manufacturing order. My apologies. And back over here where the bill of material template is selected, we want to select the right one, which happened to be 19 right there. And you'll notice everything has populated both in the components and the work orders tab, as was specified by the bomb. Now, after we hit confirm up here at the top, we have something cool that happens. I'm going to select the work orders tab over here. And at this point, normally our workers would go into the tablet view to complete them. But I'm just going to click start. And we're going to do done on each one. We're just going to move very fast so that we can do this for this flow. All right. And we're finished. Now we can move on. With all the work orders completed, I can actually mark this as done up here at the top. And that basically confirms that the dining table is completed. So let's go back to our sales order now. And that's because we're pretty much finished now. So we're going to go back over to our sales order. And now that the dining table has been manufactured, we can ship it out to our customer. However, we still need to invoice them. So to do so, I'm going to click on the create invoice button up here at the top and make sure that the regular invoice option is selected on the actual pop up right there. And now once that we're done with that, we're going to click and create and view an invoice. And I'm going to wait at this point because payment has been received from the customer. So I'm going to click confirm and then I'm going to register the payment from the customer and I'm going to create the payments. Boom. We're all done right there. With the payment registered, we're ready to process the delivery of their new custom dining table. So finally, we're going to return to the sales order via our smart button up at the top. And I am finally almost done. So now that we're here, we're going to click on the delivery smart button. We're going to validate this and we're going to apply this. And that's to confirm that the order has been shipped to the customer and we're done with that. And so ends another training mission. Good job, Odoo Cadets.